There are other ways to characterize proteins. We've been able to determine molecular weights, but you also may want to take a solution and find out how much of your protein is in that solution. It may be a ce cell contents. Is your protein in liver cells or kidney cells? Whole variety of applications. But if you have a sample, you can add antibody to your target protein, and that antibody will bind to the protein in the solution. And then you can add a carrier protein that recognizes the antibody and makes it basically insoluble. And then the you can centrifuge this because you now have a large enough complex that it separates, and you can remove the supernatant and then resuspend and examine what you have and how much of your protein is present. You can also form complexes. So if you have a partner protein, the yellow guy to which your red protein binds, you can use your antibody and it will recognize your protein. You can add the carrier, you can centrifuge, and you can iso isolate this complex. And then you can use other methods to detect what is it to which your protein has bound. For example, you can at least find out its molecular weight from SDS gels, for, just as an example. And so this immunoprecipitation is very useful in seeing sort of the layer technique of antibody binds to your protein and protein binds to something else. What, it, what is this protein to which your target protein binds? But we need to know more than just those things. And the antibodies are very useful, but looking at a purified protein is really important. And so what size is your protein? It's very easy to determine monomer molecular weight with SDS gels, but what about the overall size and shape of the molecule? And that's where molecular sieve or gel filtration chromatography comes in. So when you add a mixture of proteins, or even a purified protein, but a mixture of proteins it's easier to see, let's say you have three different proteins. You've got the yellow and the blue and the red. And if you add it to porous beads and it starts through, then the blue guys, the smallest ones, go in and out of every bead. And so it takes them more time. On the other hand, the yellow guys go outside of every bead. They can't enter the pores, and so they go through the fastest. And so your largest proteins come out first, your medium-sized proteins second, and your large and your smallest proteins come out last. So you can get oligomer molecular weight, the assembled protein molecular weight in this way. You can compare that to monomer molecular weight by SDS gel electrophoresis. If you have a hetero oligomer, that is more than one subunit, often those subunits may be slightly different molecular weights or sometimes even vastly different molecular weights. There are other methods to look at size, including mass spectrometry, where you can also even determine sequence, but it is complex, and ultracentrifugation. And I just want to mention those methods. We're not going to go into them in any detail. For catalysis, as an example, if you have a substrate that is lactose, and galactose and glucose are the products, if you have a way to determine either the disappearance of lactose are the appearance of one of the products, then you have an assay for your protein, and then you can track it through all the steps in purification. So I want you to think about, you've successfully isolated this great new protein that you're excited about, and so how would you go about characterizing it, in what order? Occasionally, a protein is isolated identified in some way it's a partner for something, and there's no information about its function. How would you figure out what this new isolated protein does? What's its function? 